Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have the singer Hazelwood. Hazelwood is from Birmingham in England, in the UK. So let's see what Hazelwood has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hello, Robert. I'm very well. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you, William. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for taking the time for the interview. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> Robert, so how was your gig last night? You, say that you said that you mentioned some of your working last night a gig, on a gig, I believe. Yes, it was really good. It was in my home city of Birmingham. So it was a really, uh, it was an open mic event, if that makes sense. So my younger brother runs his own events um, and he does it with his university uh, wow. friends. So I go there, support my younger brother, and it's a bit more of a relaxing one. You get to speak to, you know, people. It's a lot more personal, isn't it? Because, you know, you can have a drink after you can socialize rather than when it's the full on event and, you know, you're running around and you've got to prepare for a big performance. When it's an open mic, it's a lot more relaxed and, you know, you can kind of show your personality a bit more, can't you? Yeah. Amazing. Actually, mm. I had the interview a few weeks ago or, yeah, a few weeks ago with someone who runs as well um, uh, open mic night somewhere in East London. And uh, yeah. to be honest, you, I never heard before. And when he was explaining me about it, I was like, oh my God, it's very exciting where people can come and mm. show their talents. Yeah, the concept of an open mic is fantastic. And definitely if you're a new artist and you're just starting up, it's a great way of meeting the right people and socializing and creating that network which can actually assist you because you'll find producers there, you'll find instruments, it, people people who play other instruments as well, um, sound engineers, etc. So you always find the right people. Uh, so it's always you know good to go to those sort of events. That, uh, I'll say that to young people there who are watching this show, you know, go to open mic nights, you know, play the show because you never know who's going to be there. When, they, when he told, when he mentioned about it, I was like, oh my God, I need to find a way to get the magic box somehow to spend some time to promote it or just to get there and find a way to interact with the, the, the audience. I think it would be amazing, but let's see. Yeah, <laughs> um, all in due course, I'm sure that will happen soon. Robert, so tell me, um, what's the best part of living in Birmingham, in your opinion? Of living in Birmingham? You live in Birmingham now, yeah? Yeah, I live in Birmingham now. What, yeah. What's the best part of living there? I just think the convenience, it, I, you're based in London, so you know what it's like. You can get everywhere pretty much every hour of the day. I live not too far from the city centre, so I can get around and I get a bus until one o'clock in the morning, if that makes sense. So you don't need a car. I would say that is the best thing, definitely with the fuel prices. There's a good joke from me, what can I say? Yeah, so definitely with like the, the whole way that the, everything's going with the you know emission charges, which you guys have in London, we have the same in Birmingham. So the fact you can get around from A to B, even to C in quite a sort of an efficient way through public transport, that is um, probably one of the best parts of living in Birmingham. Robert, I know you are a singer and you've yes. got a, a band called Razor, Razor Woods. Is that no, right? I, I'm Hazelwood, yeah. So, oh, sorry, sorry. yeah, I, yeah. Right. So, should I call you yeah. Hazelwood or should I call you Robert? You can call me Robert. Robert's my actual uh, real name. Hazelwood okay. is is my artist persona, which actually is out of respect to my grandfather because Hazelwood is my mother's maiden name. So, if anyone's trying to guess any security passwords now for me, I'm supposed to give them an answer, haven't I? There we go. <laughs> but um, but yeah, Hazelwood is my artist persona. And um, you can yeah. please feel free to either call me Hazelwood or call me Robert, whichever. I'm easy. Right. So I'm going to call you halfway. I call you Hazelwood. I'm halfway. I call you Robert. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine, William. It's fine. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your career as a singer. Uh, so I've been doing this since I was 15 years old. I was in a boy band many, many years ago when I first started. And then I focused more on pop music and I took a break out of it. Came back into Birmingham because I used to do music in London as well. Mm -hmm. I came back into Birmingham and you know, started creating music for fun rather than trying to aspire to be, you know, a superstar, if that makes sense. Um, so I was just creating music for fun with my friends, working on projects, you know, finding the love for music again. Uh, that's when I discovered the R&B genre, really, what I now focus on and what I actually sing now, obviously what you've heard. So music's been very important since I was a little boy because my father was a DJ and my what? grandfather and you know, 
was very you know inspired by classical music you know sort of like uh, Johann Sebastian Bach for example you know your Mozart composers but then Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack and those sort of artists so I've always had musical influences in my life and then obviously I've taken my musical influences from your James Browns and your Michael Jacksons and then I'd say more modern day Robin Thicke Justin Timberlake mm -hmm. you know I know I do it obviously as a aspiring career not yet full full time but within the next six to 12 months that's the plan amazing amazing okay so are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views i'm just very curious to see what's in the in the box i i did already tell you surprises <laughs> i'm not one for surprises so this can be very interesting so welcome to william and the match <laughs> <laughs> so i have you full of random fun questions, okay? I'm just gonna play a song now just for us to move a little bit before the first question, okay? Fantastic. Let's do it. What are you drinking, by the way? It's um, lemon and ginger tea with honey. For the boys. Yeah, I had one too many drinks at the end of the show last night and I've woken up a little bit hungover. <laughs> Okay, Robert, so just before we start the, the game, so through the journey, if there is a question that you don't want to talk about for some reason, there is no answer, always can change, okay? It's over. Yeah. Okay. First question for you is, what, your, uh, what would your ideal life look like? Ideal life is very interesting because life, I feel as if you need to try and manifest what you want for it. But for me personally, I just want to have wonderful people around me so you know i'm a father i've got a wonderful little boy i want him to be in my life you know i want to have potentially maybe more children in the future maybe a wife you know you never know um you know i think you always look at the hollywood movies and think you know those beautiful houses you obviously being from brazil uh, you know i would love to live in a hot climate like that it's currently raining in the uk and it always rains in the uk so i love the uk but i would love to be living abroad somewhere nice uh, somewhere where the food's incredible, as a beach, and to have, you know, family around you and the people you love. I think that's what it's all about. It's all about love, is, isn't it, really? Absolutely. Absolute perfect life would be for me. Absolutely. I think being around um, of the loved ones, people that yeah. we care about, I think mm. it doesn't matter where you are, mm. where you are with them, people around, it's just the best way of living life, for sure. Mm. So you said you have a little boy. Yes, I do. He's one year old now. Oh my dear! Uh, what is his name? His name is Gabriel. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You're not gonna believe it. I have my godson. It's called Gabriel as well. Can I say? <laughs> I just met him. Actually, I just met. He he lives in Canada. Um, I mm -hmm. just met him um, last year. I went for Christmas. I came back in January, and it was the first time I met him. He just turned two years old. Oh, fantastic! The best. It's the best. It's the best age because they're just incredible they're like little sponges aren't they so Aww. it's incredible it's incredible when, when they're little it's when they get older that's when they grow an attitude and end up like you and i <laughs> <laughs> next question okay robert next question for you is tell us about your first kiss and your first love the first kiss well are we, talk, are we talking playground kisses or are we talking passionate? Uh, when you think talk? about your first kiss, what, which one comes to your mind? It could be a playground. Which one is the first one? Unfortunately, it was at a party. <laughs> 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 I, was about, I was about 15 years old um, when I was in the, like, my last year of school, if that makes sense, uh, over here. And yeah, it's just like spin the bottle and truth or dare, one of those things. And I kissed this girl and yeah that was like the first ever sort of experience i had where things got a little bit erotic if that makes sense like, oh uh, I, that, I wouldn't it was the day where i almost became a man i suppose um it's where it's where i took the first step so yeah and then but and what was the other bit of the question so first kiss and first um, love yeah how was your first love i don't which yeah tell us about your first love my first love was beautiful um as it always is and you have so many beautiful memories with one another you know we went on so many holidays you know, we had some great experiences and i hope that she's well now you know she is one of the reasons why i am the person who i am today 
So I'm very yeah. thankful for all my previous relationships because you kind of, you know, develop and grow. And even if you make mistakes and, you know, if you do something wrong, you know, you grow as a person and you learn that in the next relationship, you can take things, you know, those mistakes, you make sure you don't repeat them, if that makes sense. So I do apologize to any ex-girlfriends out here, you know, if I was in any way, shape or form, you know, not the ideal boyfriend, but being in love is one of the most magical things. And I'm sure you and I both agree with that. You know, when you have somebody who you know, puts a smile on your face just by sending you a text message, you know, you'll be at work, it'd be two o'clock, you finish at five and you're thinking, oh, I get to go home, I get to just cuddle <laughs> up on the sofa with this person. You know, that is that is the most beautiful thing about life. Absolutely. I think, law, as you said about relationship, I think every relationship we go through, it's like a preparation. If it doesn't yeah. go well, a preparation for the next one. You kind of, yeah. you're building your confidence, you're building the way you approach a relationship. Mm. I think everything counts at the end of the day. The way I look at it as well, I look at my life like a book. So mm -hmm. you'll read a, a novel. So, for example, The Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. You have so many characters in there, but they don't all start in chapter one, if that makes sense. So I'm currently in chapter 28 of my life, coming into chapter 29. Now there's people who have made it to chapter 24 who didn't make it to chapter 25. And there's people who are going to make it into chapter 29. And then there's people who are going to be introduced into the book yeah. and the story in chapter 47, for example. Uh, so I'm hoping that this can be over 100, 100 chapters, by the way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> But that's the way, that's my outlook on life. Like some people aren't meant to be in the whole entire story. Some characters and some people you know, don't get to be in the, see the whole journey, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Next question. Mm. Let's do it. Robert, tell me a little bit about your new single called You. Yes, yeah, so my new single called You is, uh, you know, R&B. It's, uh, do you want me to sing a little bit of it for you? Is yes, that going to be okay? Yes, okay, please. so <clears throat> I can sleep at night alone. It's a repeat up in my door. I'm popping pills since you've been gone. I'm on my own, I'm in my zone. Baby, it's me and you. Tell me what you won't do. Can we keep it real? Tell me how you feel. Baby, it's me and you. Tell me what you won't do. Can we keep it real? Tell me, tell me how you feel. So it's just about love. It's about, love. It's about, it's about love and the vibe. I'm, I kept the swear word out because we want kids to watch this as well. Um, so yeah, um, <laughs> just in case they are. So um, it's about love, really. All of my music, I write about what I've experienced in life. Uh, so it's, and because I do R&B music, kind of the message in about 99% of my songs is an erotic message. Let's be well and truly honest. Like, but they do say write what you're passionate about. Uh, that's what, uh, so, <laughs> but yeah, it's just about love, really, and it's about a relationship which I had with somebody, and um, the fact that you know, I wasn't too sure where I stood. If that makes sense, so I wanted to be with her, um, sure that she wanted to be with me, but none of us were really making it clear. And we're at that stage where I'm like, can we keep it real? Tell me how you feel. Are we going to be boyfriend or girlfriend, or are we just going to keep doing what, whatever this is? this situationship and I hope people can relate to it because when you make music and when you create this this artwork which you you know go on to release you want people to be able to relate to it and for it to have that sort of like meaning to other people so I'm hoping guys and girls you know doesn't matter like who you fancy you know you, you know what what you sort of like you know sort of identify as I'm hoping it can be relatable for you and the relationship you have with the person who you have maybe dated once or who you're currently dating or who you wish to date. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, as as I, I must say, I was watching the video clip and I really yes. loved it. Like, wow, wow, amazing, amazing. And I could see you dancing with these girls. Tell me if you can share like a funny story or tell me a little bit about this video clip, the day when you shoot it. Tell me a little bit something, um, uh, let's say, uh, that you can share about it. Like, a, um, let's say, a, a situation that you found funny or interesting. And where was shoot the, the, the video clip? So we did the shoot in two days, in sort of two separate days, if that makes sense. We did the apartment, um, which was fantastic. And that was very funny. There was a lot of outtakes. I may have to send you one, maybe you could put in the video. Um, when we was doing the white screen, it was a bit more, let's get in and let's get out. But the apartment one was a very, very funny day because we spent it with you know, one of my great friends who actually 
shout out to Robert. He's also called Robert. He let me use his apartment for the music video, which was incredible. It looks like MTV Cribs. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but we had a scene where we were in the kitchen and we wanted to get very intimate. And I basically had to pick Georgia up. Georgia's the video girl who is absolutely incredibly beautiful. I'm beautiful, sure we agree. beautiful. Yeah. Hi, Georgia. Hopefully you're watching this. And when you are. Yeah. yeah so and you're hi to William. To and you're invited as well for the show. Should you exactly. like Exactly. Yes, Georgia, <laughs> we'll get you on the show. But Georgia and I were getting a little bit intimate, only in a professional manner, you know, we're friends. And um, I had to pick her up and put her over the work surface to make it a bit hot and heated in the kitchen, if that makes sense. But that bit <laughs> didn't get in the music video just because it was very interesting. Um, yeah, I'll send you the clip, but no one else can see it. It just got a little bit heated. Uh, no. <laughs> No video girls were harmed in the in the uh, recording and the filming of the music video. <laughs> <laughs> amazing! I was watching actually, and I was like, "Wow, that's amazing! Well shot!" And the the, the you know what I mean? The, the behind us, well, this scene, mm. everything was well. Mm. Like, wow, that's amazing! That was in my home city, so you have to come and see Birmingham. Amazing! Mm. I've, I've been there once actually. I didn't have the time. I just for the weekend, but it was kind of a quick one. I didn't have time to explore yeah. a bit. That will come for sure. Okay. Next question is, um, what is your biggest idol and what have you learned with this person? Biggest idol is very difficult because there's so many inspirations musically. Um, but I would say my biggest idol was probably my granddad. He was an incredible man. And I, I love all my family and like my father's a great guy as well. And he's probably going to be watching this as well because he watches pretty much everything I do. But my grandfather passed away in 2018 and he was just a very sort of sophisticated gentleman if that makes sense he was just suave he was just smooth he he could he could just engage with a room it didn't matter whether you had one pound in the bank or whether you had a hundred million pounds in the bank if you were a good person you know he would be a good person back to you and that would kind of set the sort of standards for me as a person and what i want to obviously continue you know with you know myself and obviously you know my son and everybody else who i kind of associate with he was my biggest idol just because he was just such a wonderful and warm person. So musically, I'd say like James Brown or Michael Jackson, but as an actual person who had the most influence in my life, he was my biggest idol. When you think about your granddad, what's the best memory that comes to your mind, like genuinely? <laughs> well, obviously, being a child, we had some great experiences, but my nan passed away, unfortunately, uh, many years before, uh, about six years before he did. So she said, just look after him for me, like, make sure that he enjoys himself. And we had a lot, a lot of drinking sessions. The one time my little brother just turned 18. So you're talking about a few years ago now. And we were meant to be going to the, the, the Saatchi Gallery in London. So uh, we're going to the Rolling Stones exhibition because my little brother's a fantastic guitar player. Um, he loves the Rolling Stones, I love the Rolling Stones. So we were going to the gallery. And then the night before, my grandfather calls us up and says, guys, you want to come, you want to go to dinner? Uh, Prezzo restaurant, you know, the chain. We used to love it there. Uh, Italian food, he loved his Italian food. He's like, should we go um, get some Italian food? We won't go too crazy because obviously you guys are going to be up for London in the morning. We ended up five o'clock in the morning. We had to be on the, the, um, on the train to London about, I think it was half past seven or eight o'clock to get to London. So we had to travel into Birmingham, um, but which is only a bus away and only a 14 minute train away. So it wasn't too far, but we had to be basically in London for like half, we had to be on the train at half past seven or eight o'clock. I can't remember what it was. And we were, I, I was, I woke up on his floor in his living room. He woke up on, and my grandfather was about eight years old at the time. And I'm sure my mom probably will laugh about it now, but he was also on the floor because we none of us made it upstairs because he drank too much. And it was that sort of relationship I had with him. I will always remember that, like his false teeth were on the floor. <laughs> he was just like, it was like when you go to a party with your friends and you wake up in someone's kitchen and you're just like, wow. I never expected that to ever happen with my grandfather, but I'm so thankful that I got to share those experiences because he taught me how to drink. <laughs> <laughs> good for you, very good. <laughs> Next up. Okay, Robert, next question yes. is, what three things do you want to be remembered for? I just want to be remembered for being a, a great man. I think the most important thing, what we can do is to give back to the world, which we've obviously came from, and to produce, you know, a very you know efficient and safe future for the next generation. So 
I actually work in environmental waste management as my actual job and I have done for four years because I wanted to do a career which was meaningful to me and which I actually could make a difference and it's only a minute difference let's be well and truly honest I'm not saving the rainforest um, I'm helping people with their sort of waste management but it's diverting it from landfill and that sort of stuff so for me personally I want to do a lot of humanitarian work outside of music I want to be remembered for being a great artist and I want people to you know play my songs the same way they played George Michael songs when he passed away Michael Jackson songs when he passed away Whitney Houston songs when she passed away imagine that'd be incredible but um for me personally I just want to be no known as oh Robert Bushell that's my actual name he was just a great man like yeah he was a fantastic singer yeah he was a great artist but he did so much for his community he did so much for you know the world if that makes sense that's what I want to be remembered for and that's kind of what I'm striving for as a person very good very good that was a good question <laughs> yeah yeah this good box there. is this the, yeah this box is very magical <laughs> very much very magical <laughs> next one <laughs> All right, next question is, okay, about data again, I'm going to skip this one. <laughs> What's, what, what, what is it though? Well, let's see. Okay, what it let's is. see. Let's see. <laughs> you can, I always can turn it away. Can do what is the worst thing someone can say on a first date? The worst thing they can do is bring up their ex. I hate it. I hate it. Look to the future, baby. I'm right in front of you. Don't be talking about your ex in front of me I don't really care you know when we get into the relationship and we're a bit more sustainable and you know things we've kind of got to know each other you know tell me your star sign for example you know tell me your favorite color tell me you know your dream holiday don't talk to me about your ex relationship we can discuss that once we've gone a little bit down down the line but um yeah I would say you don't want to be talking about your past any advice to anybody I'm sure you agree William that any any advice I'd give anybody for a date is just be yourself and actually look at the potential in the person you're with. Don't, you know, think about the past when you're there. Totally, totally agree. Yeah. I think there's two main things as well. Mm. First, be yourself. Doesn't matter. Mm. Um, just be yourself. People are gonna like or dislike yeah. you the way you are. So let's, you know, just have one chance to be yourself the first day, that's it. And of course, bringing your ex to the conversation is a sign of you're not over yet something not yeah. certain it doesn't bring like a, a positive vibe for the first date i believe but yeah it, sa it sounds like you're going to be a bit of a rebound and if you if you're down for that then touche yeah. but maybe if you want to you know invest yourself uh and you, your time and your energy in somebody you don't want them bringing up the past all the time do you you want them looking to the future so yeah Absolutely. don't cool. talk about your ex <laughs> yes <laughs> next time <laughs> Right, before the next question, tell me um, what's the best part of being a singer? What do you like the most when you think? You're like, my God, that's that's is the best part. And also, there's always a challenging part as well, mm -hmm. what that would be. So the best part is performing live. Doesn't matter where it is. It could be literally outside of my garden right now in front of, the, in front of my family. Uh, it could be yesterday where I was performing in front of a small crowd in a in the in the pub in, in Birmingham or it could be literally when I was performing at my own show for my single launch and there were so many people there and it was beautiful just performing live and having that vibe and you know seeing people's faces and them getting really excited and enjoying themselves that is the best part about music because that's what you you know do it for you know you when you start doing music and you start performing when you get to kind of where I am now with my stage and my career, I, the fact that people want to spend their money to come watch you play and the fact that I can make their, I can make their night, that is the most um, rewarding thing you can have as a musician in my personal opinion. The hardest part, I would say, is studio work. Studio work is probably one of the toughest challenges because you need to put into consideration that this could potentially be listened to by hundreds of millions of people if not billions of people because you look at you know people like Justin Bieber billions of people listen to his music all across the world so it's not like you're going in there and just recording like a blase fun um you know sort of sunk like you used to when you were younger now when I record all my harmonies have to be on point you know um or all, all of my lip I have to be in the right pockets so I actually have to work. It's not just fun. As much as it is fun, and 
I'm not trying to say that I hate studio work. It's probably one of the best things in the world and I look forward to it and I would do it every day of the week if it was up to me. But it is the hardest challenge because you have to sound incredible and you have to sound your best. And some days you may not be up to it and you might be struggling mentally or you might just be struggling physically and you just got to go to work, you know? Yeah. So that is the toughest challenge, I would say, you know, that sort of making sure that everything's on point because you want to sound incredible for your audience. Absolutely. Do you know what? Uh, do you know what I've learned the other day, uh, Robert? I was talking. To, I had an interview with some uh, independent, independent singer mm -hmm. artist yeah. from from Miami, and he was telling me that uh, he's a songwriter as well. And he told mm -hmm. me, really, I didn't know that, but he told me that some, you know, producers or people like Justin Bieber, they they mm -hmm. hire songwriters to stay eight hours there to write songs, mm -hmm. and yeah. they like. And I was like, my God, I never thought about that. That's uh, they could hire people. And he told me that you need to be on and on and on. Like just, these eight mm -hmm. hours, they are paying you, they are paying the place, the studio, and you need to be those hours like writing the, you know, hits or something. I was like, wow, that's something that I never thought about. I think when you're not involved in the music industry, mm -hmm. you don't know those things. You know, I found it very interesting. I try my utmost to do as much uh, pre-writing before I get in the studio. It all depends because you go in the studio uh, with the purpose of recording. You know, this one song, you could get that song done in a you know quicker time frame than you first expected. And then your producer's probably got about 100 beats plus on his hard drive. It, you know, it's crazy. These producers, they don't sleep. They just drink energy drinks and make beats. What can I say? So, um, you know, you go in there and you could create a whole new song. And that's the beauty about being a musician. It's a beauty of being any sort, making any sort of art, I would say, because you, you don't expect anything. You know, you just go in there and you work to, you know, sort of get the result which you're looking for, but anything can happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, next question is, what would be the theme song if you had your own show? Oh, theme song. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't ready for that one, but that's a, that's a good one. Um, I love, um, like, uh, can we come back to that one? Can I have a little think? Sure, I, absolutely. I, I, I want to give a great answer. So, <laughs> you can answer that question till the end of the, the interview. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next question for you is What have you learned since the first lockdown um, with the COVID crisis? Something mm -hmm. like special that you've learned through this challenge time that the, the world has been facing for the last two years? I've learned an awful lot, in all, in all fairness. I've grown as a person. You know, I've taught myself so many skill sets uh, as a person, which, you know, I'm now, you know, sort of implementing into my day to day life. You know, I started reading a lot more, uh, a lot of like sort of, uh, you know, I think one of my books are over there. Actually, I, I read David Attenborough's book. Give me two seconds. I'll go. I'll get I'll grab it. Sure. I read uh, this book by David Attenborough, which is absolutely incredible. It solves the world's crisis. And if you could read this book, give it to the leaders of the world, David Attenborough solves the world problems. He solves uh, climate change. He solves, you know, resources being sort of um, just taken down to zilch. Basically, he, he solves overpopulation all in one book. And this man is in his 90s. So it's one of those where he doesn't really have anything to gain because it, I love the man. Hopefully he lives for eternity. But he's not going to be here to see the next 10, 15 years, you know, in all due respect, he's 90 odd years old. So he's not going to see the world deplete and all those resources run out, but he's trying to change it so that you and I, and then our children and the, their children, then their children actually have the world, which we know, if not actually have a world, which is actually better than the world we know. Uh, that's what I was looking into. And a lot of philosophy as well. I was looking into trying to take accountability for my own actions. And I was just doing a lot of sort of, um, educating on topics so such as you know politics for example uh, what's really going on in the united kingdom but we won't touch base on that too much because uh that's a total different uh that's a total different show <laughs> that's more that's more question time not magic box <laughs> i was watching actually i was watching one of the, his documentary and um he has the best job in the world he does like, my God, I was I was watching one of the, like the world's documentary and he was visiting yeah. some places like I don't know remember, but he looked so young. I was like, my God, he was so young. Mm. He was already doing this job. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. He got the best job in the world. Like the job he does is the best. And he's one of the best guys in the world, I would say. 
because yeah. it's just so humble and you know he only wants to create a better world for everybody who lives here unfortunately without getting too politically uh sort of touching that top bit it doesn't benefit anybody who's in that one percent bracket because we're all 99 percent of the world it's the one percent who control the world and we all know that without getting to uh conspiracy theory i suppose but um <laughs> they they if the one percent listens to david attenborough then a hundred percent of humanity will, su will succeed and a hundred percent of humanity will thrive not just one percent mm -hmm. ready for another one let's go let's do it <laughs> next question for you is what is your most embarrassing moment oh i did a lot of bad music when i was younger so probably that um but once i was at a party and i literally puked up everywhere and <laughs> there is a picture of it still on facebook which i untagged myself probably about 12 years ago but it's still circulating i did some i've done a lot of embarrassing things william uh but yeah, that was probably one of the worst ones. I puked up everywhere over this person's house who I didn't even know. I was just there because a friend of a friend happened. And yeah, it was um, a messy, messy night, which kind of made me think to myself, okay, Rob, you're not as cool as you think. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me um, a funny story that, um, or a funny situation that happened to you through your career as a singer. You know, like uh, something went wrong in the stage or... You know, something that's the habit that we're not expecting, something that you can share. Well, a lot of fun things have happened, actually. There's so many that, you know, I could be here till next week telling you in all fairness, because <laughs> it's been such an enjoyable exp like, experience in my life. Um, just the other day, actually, my younger brother plays guitar in my live band, which is fantastic. The fact I get to play, you know, live with him on so many occasions, it's wonderful. So he actually comes into the dressing room before I'm getting on stage. And I'm preparing myself, there's friends and family there, you know, people who have obviously came to the show who like, like my music. And, you know, I'm there, I've sprayed my aftershave and the aftershave <laughs> gave me a coughing fit because I, it, the room was, the room had no ventilation. So I've already gone through that. So I'm coughing my guts off. I've opened the, 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 um, the fire escape so I can kind of like, uh, you know, get some ventilation and make sure I can start breathing so I can sing and then my little brother comes out and he says look at my hand he, he pushed off his amplifier you know the amplifier what you plug your guitar into yeah he pushed off it way too heavy and his ring got stuck underneath his skin wow and I'm looking at him thinking to myself you can still play though right can't you <laughs> <laughs> so oh, so he's like what should I do unfortunately one of my good friends is a nurse so during the set, she realized his finger was really bad. So she just like came to the side of the stage and helped him. Uh, but I basically said to him, bro, we're on stage in two minutes. Sort your finger out after. <laughs> but I'd say that was one of the funniest things because I had the choking fit because it's the most recent one. So it's the most sort of like memorable, if that makes sense. But I had the choking fit because I wanted to smell really nice. And I just sprayed so much aftershave. <laughs> and then with, with my little brother coming in with that problem as well, I was just like, are you being serious? Like. There's wow. so many people. There's so many people out there. So yeah. Oh, partly the pressure was on him. <laughs> yeah, but he 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 powered through it, and no one knew a thing. That's the best thing about it. So um, when I, when he got off stage, like, I didn't even know that he fixed his finger um, wow. during the during the set. I went and found my friend after the set, and she was like, "Oh yeah, I already sorted it out." But um, <laughs> it was a very interesting one, and I'd say probably the strangest thing which has ever happened. Amazing. Three questions left for you. Okay, let's. Do it. Before the next question, um, did you always have the support of your family um, being a singer? Did you, they always kind of encourage you to start um, your career, your journey? Yeah, when I was younger, you know, they, I wouldn't say were as supportive as they are now. I've, you know, my father and like my mum have always been supportive with us, you know, whether it's, you know, Financially, like I, I'm broke till payday, can have 20 pounds. <laughs> One of those ones, or you know, take. I used to play football as well prior to me being a singer, and my dad used to take me to an awful lot of like training sessions, so that makes sense. So I've always had a very supportive family. Um, when it came to singing, and I was about 15, then my grandparents were massively supportive. Um, but I wasn't very good back then. 
<laughs> so everyone was like, oh, Rob sings, it's fine. Just let him do it. He'll be out of it. It's just a phase, you know. He wants to be in JLS sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> You know, but he's going to go to university. He's going to forget all about it. Obviously, I didn't. So, my parents are extremely supportive now, and and my parents, you know, generally believe that I can I can make it and I can actually have a career. Uh, my father is a very old-fashioned British guy, and you've probably met an awful lot of them. Uh, wonderful people, you know, one of the greatest guys I've ever met, and he's the best dad in the world. But. Uh, the affection of good old fashioned English people, uh, when it's your dad to the son, you know, there's never any hugs, is there? there's never any like sort of kisses or any praise. It's, oh, you're right, simple as, nothing else. When I released my new single, You, and um, it got to 16 in the R&B charts on, on iTunes, which was incredible. Uh, you know, the first accolade I've ever had. My father was so proud of me. And him saying he was proud of me meant more than me getting 16 in the charts because you know you know what it's like you know your parents never really say anything do they they they're usually on the sidelines in the dark and don't you just say anything but he was like i'm proud of you you know you've done really really well it's only going to get better for you so that was that was one of the greatest moments of this year you know absolutely yeah i think even though um our parents sometimes they can you know not show their emotions but yeah. deep inside you know that they are kind of exploding that yeah. emotion my, inside. My, my mother was sharing it on her facebook i'm like yes mom this is the reason why i've hit so many streams on spotify <laughs> <laughs> beautiful <laughs> next question is what was your worst wardrobe mistake There's been so many, I suppose. I don't think it was a wardrobe mistake um, because it wasn't an item of, item of clothing, but I think the worst mistake I've ever done for an appearance look, I bleached my hair and it came out like a cheeseburger. Ah. <laughs> so it wasn't an item of clothing, but I would say that tops any item of clothing. You know, I could dress, I could, I could dress up in leathers and paint my face like Kiss and I'd still look better than when I had that hairstyle. Dear, dear. Two questions left. Let's do it. Okay, Robert, so before the next question, um, you mentioned before that um, your inspiration, like your God in the music is Michael Jackson, you said mm -hmm. Justin Berlake, and you mentioned somebody else as well. Uh, James Brown, sort of Robin Thicke, those sort of artists, people who've got very soulful R&B voices. Okay. Know, so yeah, they're my sort of influences for the reason why I sing the way I sing. All right. So let's say let's say that um, you have three missed calls on your phone. One from Michael Jackson, yeah. one from Justin Timberlake, and another one for James Brown. Yeah. Which one would you call straight back straight away? Which one you'd send a message saying, oh, "Okay, I'll call you later." No. Yeah. No. Sorry. Yeah. We'll send a message <laughs> call you later. And the third one you say, oh, "Okay, I'll answer his message um, later on. It's okay. He can wait." Tell me. Well, I'm not too sure if you're very familiar with the way that James Brown operated. So just out of fear, I'd call James Brown back straight away. <laughs> because I'm not too sure. You should watch the movie, actually. It's um, incredible. The The film is absolutely fantastic. Uh, he used to find his band for being late. He used to, you know, if his drummer hit the beat wrong, if his guitar player play, played the part wrong, he used to be like, what are you doing? Like proper, like authoritative. So James Brown called me and I missed the call. I will be calling him back quicker than I call my mum back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, I'd text Michael Jackson and then, you know, I'd say just until that, I get back to you when I can. <laughs> Very interesting, I love it. <laughs> Next question is, what is your favorite holiday season of the year? Favorite holiday season? So do you mean sort of like uh, the festivities like Christmas or do you mean yes. season? Oh, yeah. Um, so Christmas is beautiful because, you know, you get to spend it with your family and obviously the meaning behind Christmas. You know, I, you know, I'm a Christian guy, so I celebrate Christmas for the right reasons, not for Coca-Cola and Santa Claus, if that makes sense. <laughs> so it's all, it's always beautiful. And obviously, you know, there's a lot of um, you know, togetherness. And that's the sort of true meaning of it, isn't it? At the end of the day, you know, it's all about spending that time with your family and your loved ones. And, you know just appreciating what you've got and that's why i love christmas so much uh, but i hate cold weather so <laughs> you know i love christmas but it's the 25th of december i would rather be in australia celebrating christmas with my flip-flops on and you know 
barbecuing some seafood. <laughs> 19, 19, no, 18 years of my life I spent Christmas on hot weather in back in Brazil. Yeah. Actually, my yeah. first Christmas uh, on winter was in Portugal when I came to yeah. Europe for the first time. And I was like, my God, that's that feel like Christmas for me. It was very, uh, it, I mean, I loved, I enjoyed, I enjoyed uh, Christmas time, the cold weather. So, but uh, yeah, for me it was strange. And a few years ago, my best friend, he's French, he lives in Canada, yeah. and um, he went to Brazil like um, mid to November, more or less, my mm -hmm. birthday. And um, mm -hmm. people starting already put decoration around. And it was like, my God, we it feels so weird to see yeah. those Christmas decoration with such a hot weather right now. I was like. Welcome. This is our Christmas I've, time. I've never, I've never experienced Christmas in a hot country. That's what I want to do. But English uh, Christmas is beautiful. I'm sure you agree. You've obviously experienced it. it multiple occasions. It's so beautiful, and definitely London, Oxford Street Christmas. Yeah. I know it's very, it's very busy, but Oxford Street Christmas is so picture, picturesque. It's incredible. You literally take your phone out and take a picture. The lights are some of the most magical things ever. Um, but for me personally, I love the whole football calendar as well because I'm a big football fanatic. So um, I love the fact that there's so many games and you know we've got the Boxing Day and stuff like that. And it's always great. And I love the food. food. Yeah. And, and, and the fact that you get to wake up in the morning and put a shot of Jameson's in your coffee and no one says anything to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, which uh, football club do you support? So I support West Bromwich Albion. I'm a Birmingham boy. I'm from Smithwick, so they're my local team. So uh, yeah, that's who I support. That's one of the old shirts as well behind me, which I just have in my room. So uh, yeah, I, I'm actually going to watch some play tonight. So I'm fingers amazing. crossed, fingers crossed, or William. Let's that, do uh, it. Let's do it that, tonight. That, that, in all fairness, I'm a very optimistic person in life, but uh, I'm not expecting anything. <laughs> who are playing against? I guess who they are playing. Well, we're in the second division now, which is the oh. championship. So okay. we used to be in the pre we used to be in the Premier League. So we once used to play against Arsenal. We once used to play against Manchester United. I've seen all the best players in the world because I've had a season ticket since I was four years old. So I've seen David Beckham play. I've seen Cristiano Ronaldo, Thierry Henry. Wow. Um, I've seen all those players play. Unfortunately, they always beat West Brom. Um, <laughs> but to actually witness them and actually see them play live, it was incredible. Even though they were beating my team, um, but we're playing against a team called Huddersfield Town today. Okay. So, so fingers crossed, we win. We you know we need to get promoted. It's not going to happen. As I said, I'm very optimistic, but I'm also a realist. And uh, yeah, West Brom, you know, sort yourself out because championship football isn't for me. I want to see us play against the best. <laughs> <laughs> you get there. Let's see. Let's wait. Let's yeah. hope. For that. Let's hope for that. Yeah. Ready for the last one? Last question. Last question. Let's do it. But before the last question, um, I would like to tell me a little bit about your single called Ocean. Ocean? Yeah, okay, tell so, me a little bit about it. So Ocean is one of my favorite songs I've ever written in my life. Uh, like it, it actually is about a very um, true experience. So I went, to, I went to Bristol, which is a great place on holiday. Not on holiday, really. It was just like a weekend away with some guys who I was really close friends with. And uh, yeah, we used to play football together and we used to, you know, you know, be really good friends with each other in Birmingham and we went down to Bristol. So um, we had a great weekend there. Uh, they were like pre-drinking and I was really tired because we went out drinking the day before. And uh, yeah, I wake up, didn't realize that we had a bunch of pretty girls around in the apartment, <laughs> what can I say? It's the life of being a rock star, people. Um, so yeah, I, I walk out of my Calvin Klein's and I was in a bit better shape just walking out Calvin Klein's and all these girls are like well, okay I'm like I have nothing to hide I've got nothing to be embarrassed about so uh <laughs> <laughs> this one girl obviously took a fancy and I ain't gonna lie to you we left the club early <laughs> and we had a very erotic and romantic evening and that song is actually legitimately about her so wow. yeah it's actually a very I remember having it in my head on the way when I was back up when I was going in the car on the way back home I was like <laughs> which there's a lot of euphemisms and a lot of erotic messages in the song, if that makes sense. Um, you know, if you've got a creative mind, then you're going to understand what I'm singing about, basically. But yeah, that's 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 what Ocean's actually about. So I'm actually really happy you brought that up because it's one of my favourite songs I've ever written because it's just so organic. Amazing. Very good. <laughs> Last question for you is, what was the biggest punishment have you ever received? Biggest punishment I've ever received? Yeah. 
<laughs> I've, had, I've had a few punishments in my life, I suppose, but I've never broken the law or I've never been caught breaking the law, so to say. I think everyone's <laughs> broken the law. Everyone's done a little thing incorrectly what they shouldn't have done. Uh, you know, we all get we all get one or two strikes, don't we? Um, but um, <laughs> I used to work for Sainsbury's many years ago. And uh, yeah, I almost got sacked working for Sainsbury's. So yeah, um, <laughs> join, join, join the union, guys. Join the union. They saved my job twice. I almost uh, yeah lost my job twice, which would not have been fun, uh, I suppose. And life probably would have been different because I've met so many people uh, through actually my work life, if that makes sense. Like this clothing brand I'm currently working, uh, I'm actually working with and who provide th th this wonderful T-shirt. I actually met the the founder of the company when I was pushing trolleys at Sainsbury's. He used to wow. that that was his local supermarket. And I remember he said to me, he said, oh, Rob, um, I'm starting a clothing brand and I used to do modeling. And he's like, uh, you know, yeah, we'd have to talk about it. Like, yeah, I remember when he said he was first starting it. And now, you know, I, I'm an ambassador for his brand and I wear his clothes and we're good friends. And obviously, you know, have a very good business relationship. So the biggest consequence would have, I would say, would probably be the Sainsbury's one, I suppose, because I almost lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so let's let's play now the word association game, okay? I'm going to give okay. away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mm. mind. Quick thinking. Okay. Life. So, I hope you are enjoying the interview. Before we do the word association game, don't forget to give a like, don't forget to share this video, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the bottom right there. Thank you so much and enjoy the word association game. Life. Enjoyment. Love. Happiness. How about family? I don't really have one word for it. I'd just say it's the most important thing in the world. One word for sex. Incredible. One word, one word for money. <laughs> Um, it comes around. I haven't got one word. It just comes around, doesn't it? You know. Okay. You know. Politics. Disastrous. Religion. Beautiful. Fear. Darkness. Friendship. Love. Desire. Destiny. Regrets. I've had a few, but then again, a few, too few to mention. <laughs> <laughs> Success. Ambition. Wish. Satisfaction. One word for happiness. My son, Gabriel. Oh, beautiful. Mm. One word for uh, Birmingham. Vibe. One word for England. Interesting. <laughs> One word for music. Um, sensational. One word for your single called Ocean. Just one word. Erotic. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> if I if you don't tell me before the explanation of the song, I would be like, why erotic? <laughs> One word for your new single called You. Satisfaction, because I worked extremely hard on that song. And I think if you listen to Ocean and you listen to the quality of it, and you listen to the quality of my voice, for example, and the production, my whole team, my whole team and shout out to Raymond, who makes the music videos, a shout out to Mina, um, who obviously you know, produces the track and helps me with the writing of the track. We really took it up to a next level because we really wanted to improve. Um, so I'd say satisfaction for you because we worked extremely hard and people don't see the hard work. They just see the final product. But we worked extremely hard on that song. So I'm, we're, the fact that we got the sort of uh, accolades and the success you know, from the track really is so meaningful um it, it it's the reason why we do this so yeah satisfaction and the last one now singer one word 
Me. Hey. Hey, Hazel, Hazelwood. Yeah. Very good, very good. Let's pretend now I'm going to meet your best friend for a coffee and I'm going okay. to ask him, what is the best, the best thing about um, Hazelwood and what's something that he still needs to work on to improve on? What's your best friend would say? So I reckon it's say that the, probably the best thing about me is probably the fact that I am extremely passionate and I always give 110%, doesn't matter what it is. You know, I think the worst thing you'd say is sometimes I like to be in my, I, I'm getting out of it, but my comfort zone a little bit too much. So when I sing, I sometimes sing very similar flows and very similar rhythms. Um, I need to start obviously, you know, implementing new structures if that makes sense. So I think my friend who obviously goes to a lot of sessions with me would probably say that that sort of comfort zone is the worst thing about me and my work ethic is probably the best. Should, um, he means like you should be more adventurous regarding your, the way you are uh, like taking your career. I, would, I wouldn't say adventurous in regards to the way that I'm taking my career. I think it's the more songwriting process if that makes sense. Because you sometimes have the da 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 and then you'll be on another beat and you'll do exactly the same thing. And it's like getting out of your comfort zone and like change changing, you know. I, I play with a live band now and I write a lot of my music now with you know my my session guitar player. I write a lot of my music now with the actual band themselves, rather than having a beat provided to me, and that's taking me out of my comfort zone. So I'm kind of getting out of there, and because I'm doing that my vocals are sounding better and my ideas are sounding better because I've got all this natural natural sort of vibe around me. So I think my best friend would say, maybe my comfort zone is probably my worst part, but I'm already working on it, William. <laughs> It's very good. Yeah, I think work in progress. We are every day in work in progress, all of us. I think that's um, what life is interesting. But at, at, but when you know already about this, what you need to work on, it's already halfway of the journey because you already know. So it's uh, you are going the right direction. I try my best. The only way is up. That's what I always say. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's play now. Hazel, the, the, the magic box, and you can ask me a question. But before that, let's play the music one more time. One more time. You can ask me a question now. Before I ask you the question, I think my theme song is going to be this music which you're playing because it's such a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> it's called But... Xereta. It's a Brazilian music called Xereta. It came out in uh, 1998, more or less. It's it's kind of uh, funk from Rio de Janeiro. So it's yeah. kind of, um, yeah, it stick my head. It's like Xereta mm. means like, Xereta means like someone a bit nosy. <laughs> okay. Well, my favorite Brazilian song, um, and the only one I actually know I had to sing in Portuguese, is Michatelo Ace to Bego. Nossa, nossa, assim no me mata. Ah, se tu pega, ah, ah, se tu pega. That would be my theme song, actually. There we go. Great! <laughs> I got goosebumps now. I got a lot of yeah. this song. I love this There song. There we go. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to perform it together one time. Drunken on the karaoke. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Right, you can ask me a question now. So I was going to ask you, what would you consider to be your greatest achievement? Very good question, actually. Right, um, this this work I'm doing right now, um, this project, something that uh, I would say that I would say that I'm uh, I mean I would say this project I'm working right now um, is guide me to the where I want to mm -hmm. reach. That's my dream. Mm -hmm. Some somewhere I'm gonna get in this war. This work I'm doing right now in the magic box. But saying that, one of the biggest achievement in my life. Um, it was when I left Brazil when I was 19 years old on my own. Mm -hmm. It was always I had this um, dream of living in a country where I could speak English every day. I always been very uh, passionate about the language and uh, here I am living my dream. So that, I would say that's one of the biggest achievements um, I've, I've achieved so far. But this magic box, it's something that um, it's my it's my life. It's me. I, uh, that's Uh, it's a dream coming true every single day. It's something that uh, it's guide me every day to somewhere that I want to reach one day for sure. So that's my my answer to you. 
the box isn't the only magical thing on this show. You also are very magical, William. So, oh, yeah. thank you, thank you very much. Thank I'm sure every, much. I'm sure everyone's going to agree with the comments as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be shy now. Let me write. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, did you have, did you have a good time? Did you enjoy the interview? I've loved it. I've watched several before I did this one, so so I was prepared for it. Um, and I really, really have enjoyed it. Hopefully, in the near future, you never know, I can come back on the Magic Box. Totally, totally. The yeah. season two, it's already coming back soon, and I'm gonna get, I'm, I'm gonna organize to get my first guest to the show to see how much they changed, how much yeah. uh, their point of views, the different questions as well. So prepare yourself for the second season, okay? Get ready. <laughs> of course, I'll, I'll be, I'll be there. Season two. Robert, before you go, would you like to share a positive message or a positive quote, something that inspires in life? So I've got a couple motivational quotes. One is actually from one of my very, very sincere great friends who's been really, uh, you know, important to me over the last few months. He's helped me immensely grow as a person. He's helped me grow my career, my confidence. And he always says to me, it's better to light a candle than it is to curse the darkness. And he always says it, it's like his little catchphrase. And I've started implementing it in my sort of sayings now, but I think it's incredible. It's better to light a candle than it is to curse the darkness. But my mo motivational quote would be, never stop learning because life never stops teaching. Totally, it says yeah. everything. I think every day is a new learning. Every day there is something new to learn. If you are open to it, you need to be open for it to it as well to get the lesson and the message. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you do as well. You could, yeah. you know, I always reflect back that, you know, I once, you know, worked at Sainsbury's, had that regular job and every day is a school day. That's what the store manager used to always say. And she was a wonderful lady. And yeah. it's just the truth. It doesn't matter whether you're working, you know, in a supermarket or whether you're working on a building site or, you know, whether you're doing what you and I do, you know, every day is a school day. I've learned just from speaking to you today and you have to have that open mind and you're never too old to learn new things. Absolutely. Hey, Suhu, thanks so much for the, the interview. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks so much for taking the time and good yeah. luck tonight with the football. I'm here across my fingers. Okay. Obrigado, Abri William. De nada. De nada. Hey. <laughs> De nada. Thank you very much. Take care. Okay? Well, you. And yourself. I'll see you soon. See Thank you, you soon. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com, and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.